the first time you go to use a new design tool software package, there's nothing as good as a great graphical user interface. All those fancy buttons, helpful wizards, interactive hints and tips and guided flows. <laughs> All that stuff can really make the difference in your first time through experience. In fact, sometimes it's the difference between success and failure. The first time. Sometimes the second time too. But for me, at least when it comes time for the third and fourth and fifth and umpteenth friggin' iteration, clicking all those buttons and menus and pop-ups and wizards can really start to make me crazy. Oh, phew. Sorry. <laughs> Luckily, there are scripts. Thank you. Thank you. No, really. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. When it's time to get serious about iterating to debug, close, and optimize your design, nothing is more powerful than a good set of scripts. My guest today is Ron Plyler from Xilinx, and we're going to talk about scripted flows in Vivado. That's right. Help is on the way. Before we get started, remember to click the link. There you can download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. Welcome, Ron. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Amelia. Great to be here. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about scripted flows, and some people might think that's a boring topic, but I have to admit, I'm a scripter. I like to write scripts for pretty much everything I do, and I think a lot of my nerdy friends are the same way. But for those in the audience who maybe haven't joined the church of scripting, let's talk about the benefits of using a scripted flow. Okay, to best understand the benefits of the scripted flows, let's start with a high-level picture of the Movado design flow. Cool, okay. Now, typically you start with some design source files, IP, constraints. Yep, I do. Then you use the Vivado suite of design tools to run synthesis, place and route to implement the design. Sure. And then once you have the implemented design, you review the reports and analyze the design to check whether or not your design goals are met. For example, you run timing analysis, mm -hmm. maybe some power analysis, yeah, and then bitstream generation so you can actually take the device in the lab and test it and see how things are working. Cool, okay. So you've heard the term turns per day. We always want to get in more turns per day. And turns per day is essentially the turnaround time between updating a design and then being able to use those results. Sure. I've heard that time and time again. Right. And you don't want to babysit the tools to push through every little part of the design flow. You know, once you have this process set up and established, the part of actually running Vivado involves a lot less interaction and a lot of crunching in the background on the complex synthesis and place and route algorithms. This is where the automation comes in. You've already gone through the setup of your design process, and you can automate running the steps of the flow. Cool, okay. So instead, you want to direct the effort to your computing platform and free up your time for other tasks. So to make things easier in Vivado, we've abstracted the process of running the complete flow into what we call a design run. Okay. And essentially, a design run is a complete run through the flow, and it also represents a unique combination of different constraints, floor plans, tool options, and even place and route strategies. Okay, so Ron, say I've got one design run with all my options, I send that off to the server, it's crunching away, now what? It's uh, time for a little Facebook or Candy Crush, maybe? No? <laughs> well, that depends. Essentially, once you get one design run up and running, you can set up a bunch of other design runs to explore different solutions in parallel. Ah, okay. These would represent different combinations of options, constraints, strategies. And once you get that set up, you'll feel a lot better knowing that your expensive server farm is working almost as hard as you are. Wait a minute, Ron. I want my server farm to work harder than I am. <laughs> well, that's a good goal. <laughs> but most importantly, you'll have more time to concentrate on more useful tasks and increase your number of turns per day. Perfect. Okay. What language do I use for my scripting? Well, in Vivado, the centerpiece of automating tasks is the tickle script. And here is a typical example of a Vivado tickle script. Okay. This tool command language, or tickle for short, has been the industry standard scripting language for many generations of EDA tools. It contains everything you'd expect in a high-level scripting language. Commands, data structures, control structures, procedures. Okay. I typically have a lot of constraints involved with each design, timing constraints and the like. How do I capture and describe those? Well, along with Tickle, Vivado supports another industry standard called SDC, which is short for Synopsis Design Constraints. 
Okay, great. I've used SDC with a lot of other tools. Good. And Vivado supports SDC timing constraints as well. Cool. Okay. So hasn't SDC been used in ASICs historically? Does it handle everything I need for programmable design? Yes, it does. We have XDC, short for Xilinx Design Constraints, which is a Xilinx extension of SDC customized to fit your design needs. Ah, okay. One key example is this get property command. Design objects in Vivado such as cells and nets have certain properties and you use get property to retrieve them from the design database. For example, here we're checking the cell type property that matches the pattern SRL, which are the Xilinx shift registers. Okay. And here we're checking pin direction properties to find just the outputs. And what does this script do anyways? It's a simple placement design rule check to make sure each shift register is driving a load in the same physical location. And you could probably check one or two of these by yourself just by examining the placement in the GUI. Yeah. But you'd probably rather automate this for a million logic cell design. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so what's the hierarchy between XDC, SDC, and Tickle? That's a good question. So if we were to summarize the Tickle support conceptually, we start with the SDC constraints. And then around that, we add our own extensions to make XDC. And then finally, we made all these Vivado constraints and commands into Tickle commands that can be used with the rest of the standard Tickle language. Ah, okay. So let's go back to the design runs for a minute. Let's say I've written this big pile of scripts and constraints, but how does that look in Vivado? Well, to make things easy, especially if you're new to Vivado, we have the project concept. And projects are used to organize your design runs in their related source files, constraints, and other settings. Actually, in Vivado, the design runs in the tool are launched by pushing appropriate buttons such as Run Synthesis, Run Implementation, Generate a Bitstream. And inside Vivado is a sophisticated infrastructure that manages running the flow, keeping track of the data, and generating the reports. And this is all done automatically as part of a push button flow. And each one of these push buttons has an associated tickle command, which allows us to put the whole design flow into a script. Very cool. Okay, break it down for me. If we scripted up a project flow, what would it look like? Let's take a look at this example. Here we have the first part of the script that sets up the design run by creating the project with the right part, adding the IP and HDL and XDC constraints, and setting the design top. Okay, so how does it launch the design runs? Well, here we have the second part where we launch the design runs. First, synthesis and then implementation, which actually goes all the way through place and route to a generated bitstream. Okay, Ron, what if I'm not yet a Tickle expert and I'm used to using the GUI? Is there an easy transition into the scripting world? Yes, there is. Say, for example, you're working in the GUI and trying to set up your design or constraints. Yeah. Everything you do in the GUI has a corresponding Tickle command that gets echoed into the Tickle console. Each command is also captured in the Vivado journal file. Okay. You can use commands to interactively switch between the GUI and a command shell at any time, which is useful when you're developing your scripts. For example, when you forget the syntax of a command, but you know how it's done in the GUI, you can temporarily switch the GUI, get the command, then switch back to the command shell. Cool, okay. Yeah, and then finally, there's a Tickle app which generates a Tickle script that recreates a project from scratch, which is an excellent way to get started. Okay, these project runs seem powerful, but I'm kind of a customizer. That's okay, because Vivado projects aren't totally rigid. There is actually a great deal of customization, especially for scripting. Cool, okay. Say you want additional runs in parallel. Well, it's simply just a matter of scripting them in. Here we're creating an additional run with a different performance place and route strategy. Okay. Then there are these things called tickle hooks, which allow you to insert custom tickle scripts at any stage of the design run. The script is run when Vivado gets to that particular point in the flow. And typically these hooks are used for intermediate analysis and reports and additional optimization steps. Gotcha, okay. And note the use of properties. The hook setting is actually a design run property. Properties show up pretty much everywhere in Vivado scripts. Okay. And finally, you can also check the status and results of design runs. Design run status and timing statistics such as the worst negative slack are actually design run properties. Figuring out whether or not the design is finished and meeting timing is just a matter of checking its properties. Huh, okay. So what if I don't want to be locked into this project architecture? Can I go rogue or am I locked into the project? You can go rogue. Once you are more familiar with Vivado, you might be more comfortable running without projects. And we call this the non-project mode. Okay. 
In non-project mode, the flow is similar, but there are no design runs and no project automation. Ah, okay. So although you lose the convenience of automation, you gain complete control over the flow. You also reduce some of the overhead that comes with projects by generating only the files that you need, which makes non-project mode a good fit for revision control. Sure. Besides your source files, you only need to check in those output files you care about, such as the final place and route results. With projects, many output files are generated unconditionally, making it a little hard to figure out how to keep these under revision control. Sure. So how is that different from project mode? Well, comparing the basic design flow between projects and non-projects, they're actually very similar. The big difference is that with non-projects, you're using the low-level commands that are actually underneath the launch runs command, such as synth design for synthesis and route design for routing. Besides that, you need to save your own progress and generate your own reports. That makes sense. Can you show me what the script looks like for one of these? Sure, let's take a look at an example. Similar to the project mode, you read in the IPs, HDL sources, and XDC constraints, and then you use a synth design command to synthesize the design for the target part. Okay. And note this command, write checkpoint. This command is used to save progress as a checkpoint file. And checkpoints are design snapshots that contain everything about the design, the net list, constraints, all the physical data that reflect the current design state. Okay. And remember how we said you need to keep track of your progress if you're running without projects. Right. Say, for example, you make a mistake late in the flow, you're missing a placement constraint and you need to rerun. Instead of rerunning synthesis from scratch, you can use open checkpoint to load this checkpoint called synth.dcp. Okay. Then the design will be restored to its post-synthesis state, and from there you can continue with the rest of the flow. Okay. We don't quite have time for an example, but if you're asking yourself if you can use Vivado within makefiles, the answer is yes. You use intermediate checkpoints for the various makefile targets. Very cool, okay. Now, the equivalent of implementation involves quite a few steps. First, there's op design, which optimizes the design, and then place design for placement, and then finally route design for the routing. Makes sense. Depending on your needs, you might want to save checkpoints after placement and after routing, mm -hmm. and save some reports for utilization, maybe timing, uh -huh. and write out a bit stream for programming the device. There is more scripting involved without projects, but you have complete control over what files are generated and when they get generated. Okay, Ron, let's wrap up this bad boy. Break down the main points for me, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, automating Vivado using tickle scripts helps get you more turns per day. Great. You can script with projects for more automatic management or without projects if you want more control. And what can you do with scripting? You can automate the whole flow, parts of the flow, or just repetitive tests, especially ones that are tedious and error prone. Okay. And finally, besides using examples, there are many easy ways to get started with scripts, such as using the GUI and capturing the tickle commands it generates. Fantastic, Ron. I think I'm ready to write tickle like it's going out of style. Where can I go for more information? There's lots more at xilinx.com. You can view quick take videos, which are short video demos. We have design flows overview, using the project batch flow, using the non-project batch flow. These are all fundamental to getting started with scripting. Cool, okay. We also have some tutorials to go along with this, like the design flows overview, a lot of extensive documentation, the user guide for design flows overview, using tickle scripting, and then finally we have this place called the Xilinx User Community Forums. Here's a place where you can interact with other users, you can share ideas, and you can get answers to some common questions. Fantastic. Well, I think that's all I have time for. Thank you so much for joining me today, Ron. Okay, thanks again. Before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the EE Journal YouTube channel or the on-demand section of eejournal.com.